Hey, thanks for stopping by today. We got a fun project. I had a customer reach out to me about a week ago and send me this picture. Asked me if I could put something like that together. And the first thing that I did is looked on Etsy to see if there was any existing 18 wheeler type patterns out there that I might be able to use. Well, I found this one that was fairly detailed, looked like it was just what she wanted. She uh, approved of what we wanted to do, but one of the things that she wanted to change was she didn't want one garage, she wanted three garages for a total of 75 cars worth of storage. Told her no problem, we could do that, and so we purchased and downloaded the file from Etsy. When I was looking at the in, uh, information on the file, I then realized that that particular file was designed for four millimeter plywood. Well, the tractor trailer uh, parts really didn't matter. I was gonna use quarter inch plywood on the tractor trailer part, so that didn't matter. But the pattern that uh, was part of the Etsy file was not gonna work in any way, shape, or form, so I had to go out to my favorite box generator. I'll leave that particular uh, link in the description uh, so you can check it out. Went out there, did my own thing to generate these 25 car uh, uh, garages and uh, it was just a lot of fun. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is when you download a file off of the internet, doesn't really matter where it is, typically it's going to come in as all one color in the light burn. And it'll be up to you to determine what is a cut line, what is a score line, what is an engrave line. And so that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna jump into Lightburn and we're gonna look at the pattern on the tractor trailer part first. Um, we're gonna look to see how you can tell, uh, and typically just by the file, you're not gonna be able to tell whether it's a cut line or a score line or an engrave line. You're gonna have to look at the picture and based on the picture that came with the file, uh, that's where you're gonna determine uh, what you need to do to make this thing work. There's some tricky parts to this file. Um, the the smokestack, the hatching on the uh, smokestack, um, because if you don't understand how to adjust your minimum and your maximum powers when this when they, when you try to do this hatch work, um, you'll get burnt corners and real faint lines in the middle. So it's it's a it's a good exercise to understand how to. Uh, generate even colored lines. We're going to do that today, so we'll play with the minimum and maximum powers uh, in light burn. Uh, the little uh, louvers on the front part of the cab uh, are tricky. You've got to be able to play with those with your minimum and maximum power settings when you're scoring. So we've got scoring, we've got cutting, we've got engraving, we've got it all today. So stick with me. Let's go to light burn first and start to figure this thing out. Okay, I have imported this uh, DXF file. Um, and so you notice that it's all one color at this point. And so to identify the parts and pieces, this, this uh, just outline of the tractor trailer, that's gonna be the back piece. This, is gonna, this piece here fits directly over this piece. These are just some um, wheel parts. This is the smokestack. And this is the part of the back half of the tractor trailer rig. This is pretty straightforward on what we need to do there. We'll do that in a minute. But this is the section that we really got to kind of pay attention to. And so we need to determine what's a cut line, what's a, an engrave line, what's a score line, and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> do is I'm going to ungroup it. And then I'm going to start uh, choosing the things that I know that are cut lines. And so I use the color red for cut. Uh, I only use four colors typically. Black is frame layer, red is cut, blue is engrave, and green is score. I don't associate them with a setting in any way. That's what my material library is for and I find that it works out real well. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of uh, select these things uh, that I know that need to be red. And we'll get this done real quick. We got the outside perimeter with that. That was good. That's going to be a cut line. We'll get this other wheel done. We'll get this wheel done. Make 
sure that we're not missing anything here. Okay, that's all red. That's all red. Okay, it looks like I've got all of my items that I need to be cut out. Uh, classified as red. I don't worry about settings right now. I always assign my colors and then I'll go into the settings. So let's talk about uh, the difference between an engrave and a score. Uh, a score would be just basically the laser drawing a line on your wood. Uh, it's not going all the way through. Depends on how deep and dark you want. It depends on a kind of a personal preference. So the other thing I'm going to do is these windows need to be cut out. So I want to choose the inside lines for these windows to be cut. The outside lines are just going to be scores. There's just going to be a line outside the window. So I'm going to go ahead and select those to be green. Um, this window needs to be red. I want to cut it out. Um, this right here, this logo is going to go. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put in, I'm going to personalize that. These steps will need to be cut out. Now, when you're looking at the uh, at the picture, and I'll put a picture up so you can kind of see the file name, uh, the file picture, uh, you're going to have to kind of determine what needs to be cut and what doesn't. But you can clearly see that these three things have been cut out, and then the backer plate will back it up. So these right here will be score lines. So we'll turn those green. That one needs to be green, green, this needs to be green, okay. This needs to be green. Now this was a real, this is tricky because we've got sharp curves and straight lines. This and the smokestack are going to be where if you don't have your minimum and maximum power settings, if you don't have these two settings set just right, you'll have a mess on your hand. So I'll show you how to determine that when you're scoring. It's real important. Matter of fact, I'll put a link to the video that talks about minimum and maximum uh, settings when you're scoring, when you're drawing lines. Okay, let's do, this is gonna be an engraved, so this is gonna be blue. This is gonna be a score, so it's gonna be green. And let's come up here and down here, I'm going to cut this out. So that's going to be red. These things I'm going to engrave. So they're going to be blue. Let's go ahead and do those blue. And then we'll have to individually select these outer lines. And what I'll do is I'll put up pictures as I'm selecting these different parts on what it looks like when it's finished. And that way you can kind of get a sense for what's, what's engraved, what's line work, that kind of stuff. We'll go ahead and score that. And now I think the only thing we've got left on this tractor trailer setup is just this section here. If I select this section here, you notice that if I select one line and it selects all of them, it means it's a closed shape and it will engrave or fill in fine. But watch what happens when I do that up here. If I select this line that I want to engrave, it doesn't, it, it leaves this section out. So we've got an open shape. And if I try to preview this, it's gonna tell me, hey, this is not a closed shape, so you can't use the engrave or the fill command. So we've gotta close this. We've got to install a line here, install a line here, and then it will, it will engrave for us. Okay, so next we'll go ahead and fix this little bit and uh, we can move on to the next section. Before we move on, we've got to fix this shape. This is not a closed shape. As I select it, you'll see that it doesn't, uh, the outline, the little marching ants is not around the entire uh, shape. So we've got to fix this and I'll show you how to do that. It's real easy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that adjoining color so I don't have to worry about battling with it when I'm adding these lines. And I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to select my pen tool. I'm going to come down here to the matching color, which is 27. I'm going to Go from here to here, right mouse click, from here to here. 
right mouse click. And so we're not done yet. One of the things when you go to manually close a shape like this, if I go back to my selection tool, you notice that if I select it, it's still not a closed shape. These uh, links that we just added are not uh, part of this shape yet. We've got to manually do that. And so I, the, what I've done and had the best luck with it is I do it one at a time. So this is already selected. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to select the line that we just added, come up to edit and go auto join selected shapes. Then I'm just going to move around and keep doing that until they're all connected. Got one last one. Auto, okay. And how to check that to make sure that they're all joined is if I just click off of this so it's all deselected, de and if I select this shape now, all of it should get selected, which it does. And so now we're good to go with this shape. Our last step will be to turn it blue because it's going to be an engrave. I'm going to turn the red layer back on so we can see it. And at this point, we should be able to preview it. And all of those things should be fixed. Yep. Great. All right, let's move on. We've got the uh, all the lines assigned to either a cut, a score, or an engrave on this top section of our trailer or our tractor. And now we're going to go ahead and finish this up. So let's go ahead and just zoom in. And most all of this stuff is all going to be cut. So we're going to go uh, ungroup this. And we can go ahead and get all of this stuff selected and turn it to red. This needs to be red. This needs to be red. And this hatch mark here, so we want to do the outline in red. And then we want to do the hatch mark. Now it's probably not grouped. So what we'll do, remember if you use your left to right selection tool. It's only going to be what's in the selection tool that'll be selected. So we'll turn that blue. No, that's going to be green because that is going to be scored. And so uh, looks like we've got all of our cut lines done there. We've got our score line there. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to go to the laser <clears throat> and we're going to have to play with the settings to get this, the minimum and maximum speeds for the score for this hatch. And for the line work in the uh, in the tractor part, and then these louvers, and all three of these areas, because these are just long straight lines, they should be fairly easy to dial in. Uh, these will need to play with the minimum and maximums, and this will definitely have to play with the minimums and maximums. And you'll see that uh, if you just set the minimum and the maximum at the same, uh, this pattern is going to be a mess. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go to the laser. We'll start playing with our minimums and our maximums for our scoring for this stuff in green and get this dialed in. Before we go to the laser, I want to make sure that my layers are in the right sequence. Remember that your laser will cut it from top to bottom. So in this particular case, I've got my cut line on top and I don't want that. I want my score line to be first, my engraved to be second and my cut to be very last. So I'm going to select the cut layer and I'm going to just arrow down twice to put it on the very bottom. Once I have my layers in the correct uh, sequence, I'm going to go ahead and start assigning my uh, settings. So I'm going to uh, click on my score layer. I'm going to come down here, open my ply, open my no thickness, and I have a score setting here. You can make these. I've got a video for that as well. I'll put that in the link in the description down below along with the card up top. And all I've got to do is make sure that I, I've got the correct layer selected and assigned to layer. And you notice that it just changed it. Go to my blue layer for my engrave, select my engrave, and assign to layer. Now you might have to tweak these, but these are going to get you in the ballpark. And then for settings, we're going to go to the, <clears throat> this is quarter inch for all of this tractor trailer stuff. So I'm going to go to my 0.21, my cut, and assign my layer there. And you can see that that has changed. Now all of my layers are in the right sequence. My settings are proper, and we can go to the laser.
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to just kick out the green portion to the laser so we can uh, test our settings for our scoring. So I'm going to turn the output off for everything else except the green. I'm going to use a little window here just to select that green part. I'm going to preview it just to make sure that's all I've caught. And we're good there. We'll go ahead and send it to the laser. And our setting right now for this scoring is going to be 400 millimeters per second, 35 and 35. I'm going to leave the minimum and the maximum the same just to show you what a mess you'll have uh, if you leave the minimum and, mower, mi minimum and maximum power uh, when you're scoring on something like this. On these straight lines it's not going to be too bad, but these corners will more than likely be burnt. These corners up here, anything, any place that laser is going to slow down you'll see it here. So let's go to the laser and see what it's going to do. We got that all set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at this score line. Okay, so here's the results. I spared you all the details on going from where I started to where I ended up. But you can really see right here, this is 35 min, 35 max, 400 millimeters speed. This is on a 35, 100 watt uh, thunder. And you can see right here, you got burn marks here, you got burn marks here, some burning in the corners here. But you can see in general that the lines are not uniform, they're thicker. They're thicker in the corners. They're really not really burnt, but just looking at that overall um, layout, um, you can see some real inconsistencies when it comes to line width and burning. Compared to this over here that I just ran, and this is, let me see if I can get this out of the way. Um, this is 35 max, three minimum. And you can see I haven't touched this. I haven't pulled it off the laser. I haven't sanded it or anything. And you can see how much more uniform all the lines are. All the intersections aren't any different. They're not any darker. Um, this is a very uniform look. And so um, this is kind of the benefit that you can get um, by messing with your minimum settings when you're scoring. You should never turn your minimum uh, settings down when you're cutting, only when you're scoring. And I'll also link another video uh, where I covered more about this subject in the description and uh, up above in a card. But you can see there's a pretty big difference. This I would definitely have to do some sanding. The line uh, thicknesses are uh, varied and they don't look that good compared to this where really I don't have to do anything. I could pull this off the laser if this was on my tractor and uh, it would be ready to go. So big difference. Three minimum, 35 minimum. Big, big difference. So let's go to the smokestack. That's the one that's probably going to be harder. And uh, we'll see what happens there. OK, we're going to go ahead and do the first version with the smokestack, uh, 35 and 35. Let's see what it looks like. Turn on the fan. That'll help. this off the tripod and you can see you can see that the smoke spec is pretty deep here pretty deep here so let's go ahead and take a look and see what uh, the same setting that I used on the uh, other line type see what it looks like over here on the on the smoke stack we've got 35 and 35 just like we do up here and you can see that we've got 
all these corners here are deep, are a lot deeper than they should be. It's still not a bad engrave, it's just that they're not even. You got lighter lines in the middle and dark lines on the perimeter. Now, if that's the look you're going for, this would work fine. But look at how much more even and uniform this hatch is. This is 35 and 3 for max and minimum power. And there's virtually no big depth difference between your corners and your midlines here. Um, you could actually probably go just a little bit more power if you wanted to, but you can see that there's a big difference in how uniform that hatchwork looks. And that's really what that's going to give you is um, uh, it, it's not going to be consistent over here where it's going to be consistent over here. So playing with your minimum certainly helps in this situation. Now that we've got all the uh, score settings figured out, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and uh, design your box. Uh, since the, the uh, pattern didn't work on this one because it was made for four millimeter plywood and I want to make these uh, storage garages out of three millimeter, we're going to have to make our own boxes, but that's no big deal because um, this program right here, boxes.py on the internet, has been a very reliable uh, source. I've used it a lot. And there's one thing that uh, if, you, if you do it before you generate your, your boxes, you'll have a lot uh, better success rate. And what I mean by that is if we go into the parts and samples and we come into our burn test, this is something that's going to establish your kerf for these particular finger joint boxes and I would highly recommend you do it. It's really easy if you're, you just put in your thickness of material and be accurate about this. Um, and uh, I would recommend making two sets of cards. Gener just leave everything um, as defaulted and generate it. And you're going to see that it's going to give you a bunch of uh, test cards. And these test cards fit together. I'll post a picture on kind of how they work. But basically what you're doing is you're putting this uh, 0.10 millimeter set of uh, finger joints with this 0.10 and see how they fit. If they fit too loose, you go uh, higher or lower. And this will generate a range of sizes. And so this basically goes from 0.1 all the way up to 0.16. So it gets bigger. And then what I would also do is you, 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 you uh, export this, you import it into Lightburn, you make these cut files, you make the uh, text as engraving files, and you make these little, uh, these little cards. Don't put any kerf offset uh, setting on your layer at all. And then uh, I would make one set there, and then what I would do is I would come down and I would go like 0.06 and generate it again. And that'll give you a second set of cards that are 0.06 to 0.10. And that'll give you a great range to figure out what uh, the curve setting is for this particular tool. Um, and once you get that, then it's really easy to generate um, many, many different kinds of boxes with these finger box joints. So, um, Let's, now that we know what we need to do there, my setting is 0.080. And I'll show you a picture of that on kind of how those fit together. You want them fitting together firm, but not too tight. You don't want them too loose. And because uh, you want to have the ability to put a little glue in there. Uh, otherwise, it'll be too tight. So let's go to the box generator and I'll show you how to come up with this storage garage that's going to fit 25 um, Matchbox cars. I'm going to show you how to make this box on our boxes.py on the internet. We're going to go to um, trays and drawer inserts. Then we're going to go to type tray. And we're going to come down here. And so there's all kinds of options here, but for our particular box, matter of fact, it's nice this uh, will give you kind of a preview of the type of box that you're going to make. And so we're going to come up here to type tray settings. And this is the size in the X direction. Well, our each individual opening for our garage is going to be four inches. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 100. There's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So we're just going to round it to 100. And we're going to change this because we want five across and five down. So we want 25 storage spots. This is uh, two inches, so this will be 50. That's fine. We're going to change this to five. And then this is the inner height. Um, and so <clears throat> we want this. Uh, this is actually the height of the, the box. So we're going to say that's going to be 50 millimeters or two inches. And this right here, this is where you determine the inner height of this box. So if you don't want it recessed like it is here, um, we're going to put in zero. Um, the nice thing about it is you can put in whatever you want and make it uh, all your own. So we're going to leave that at zero. One of the other things that I will tell you is um, you want to uh, not leave any of these blank. If any of these are blank, it's going to give you an error. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we're going to put in our thickness for our material. You want to be as accurate as you can be here. And we're going to export it as an SVG. We're going to get rid of our reference. We'll just say zero here to disable it. We're going to consider that loop. I've always used loop and had real good luck with this. And then probably the most important is we're going to change this to 0.08. That is my burn correction or your kerf that you established when you did those little cards. And if we've got everything set up right, we should be able to just generate this. And there's our, our box. Now what we would normally do, here's the back, here's the uh, sides, the liners, everything. And so what you would normally do is you would export this, save it, and then import it into Lightburn. And uh, basically all of these are going to be just one layer, uh, your cut layer, and you could go ahead and cut these out. But before I do that, I'm going to make a smaller box to test my settings because I don't want to waste this kind of wood and have it be uh, not quite the setting that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to just go here, redo this, and I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to say, just give me a small box. Just give me two and two. Just a small box because all I'm looking for is to make sure that my settings are correct before I waste a bunch of wood. I'm going to regenerate this. And now you can see we've got just a small box, but all the uh, all the curve settings is what we're really uh, looking for. So I would export this and I would cut this out and we'll go. I'll show you the uh, this box that I got cut out and show you some tips and tricks on how to assemble these boxes when you get them cut out. We've got our small box, our test box cut out. This is just a four section box. This is, was a three millimeter Baltic birch. That's what we put in the generator. And we've got the sides laid out, the bottom laid out, and the internal parts or the separators. A couple things I will tell you that I've learned uh, making boxes is when you have these pins that are gonna be fitting into these slots on the inside, I found that if you take a little bit of sandpaper and just lightly sand, just bevel these edges that are very sharp on both sides, don't do it much, just kind of knock that edge off. These go in a lot faster. And so um, just take a little bit, just this is 220 sandpaper. I'm just knocking that edge down. And then what we would want to do is we would want to go ahead and test our fit. And they should fit in there with a little bit of force, but not much. And then you want to make sure that this is sized properly too. They should be snug, but not tight, tight. Okay. And you can see that it slides down there, pushes right in. So it looks like our kerf is looking pretty good. And then when you're assembling these boxes, you always want to do the internal parts first and then just kind of work around. Um, typically get the internal parts done. The other thing that I will tell you is when I glue these together, I will take a little bit of 2P10, 
it's just super glue. It's my preferred uh, glue to use. And I just put little dollops of super glue along here. Not much so you don't have squeeze out along here on both sides. And then uh, I'll just go ahead and put it together and get this middle taken care of. And you can see if you have your settings right, these boxes snap together. They're a lot of fun to make and pretty much the sky's the limit on what you want to do. Then at that point, it's just a matter of taking these, putting the ends on. That all goes together. You need, and then just go around to each individual one. And um, a lot of times I find that the edges, um, you, you might have to fight with them just a little bit. But there you go. See how that snaps in? Then we'll go ahead and put this other long piece on. And typically you always want to start in the corner where your, where your existing side is. Look at how nice that fits. And then let's do the last piece. And so we'll just go ahead and come up here. Snapped right in. And there's our box. Well, we know that our, that our burn rate uh, setting is right, and so now I feel comfortable with building that bigger garage that has the 25 individual slots. Well, as you can see, with a little bit of knowledge on what to do about scoring, engraving, and cutting, you can make some pretty neat projects. I hope this information was helpful. If you do me a favor, if you like the video, give me a like. If you haven't, please subscribe. And if you have the ability, I would really appreciate you giving me a thanks and contributing to the channel. It's those contributions that make videos like this possible. Thanks and have a great day.